Welcome everyone to today's topic. It's still your girl Angel. We are back again with an amazing episode. Today we'll be talking about the rule of the Holy Spirit in our life. I'm trusting God you all had a blessed week. You know as a culture, yeah, before we begin, we always start with a prayer. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to be counted among the living. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life. Thank you, Father, for the gift of provision. Lord Jesus, as we are about to begin with today's episode, Lord, use me as a vessel, Father. Speak to us, Lord, in a way that we will understand. Father, be with us, O oh God. I am just a vessel, Lord. Use me. May your will be done in our life. Open our spirit to understand. Open our spirit to receive your word and help us to put everything into practice. Come, Holy Spirit, because we need you now more than ever before. Come and lead us, come and guide us, come and direct us. Show us the path, show us the way. Thank you, Father, for we know you are always with us, and we thank you for receiving our prayers. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Today, we'll continue with the series from where we ended the last time. One of the rules of the Holy Spirit in our life is the Holy Spirit help us in our weakness. When you find yourself in that place of worship that you can pray, the Holy Spirit comes in at that moment. The Bible says that for we do not know what to pray. We do not even know how to pray, what to say to the Father. The Holy Spirit is our only helper. He tells us how to pray. The thing I'm like, you can ask Hannah. The Bible says that when Hannah went to the temple, she was so tired of her problem, frustrated about life, everything. So she went to pray. The Bible says her lips were moving, but words was not coming out from her mouth. Don't think that Hannah wasted her time. We saw the result. Hannah had a Samuel, not just any child, but God gave her a Samuel and a priest in that matter. So, so when you find yourself in that position that you are praying, the words are not coming out, you're tired, you think you're wasting your time in that prayer, I tell you what, you are not wasting your time. What you are actually doing the spiritual realm, you are declaring things, you are bringing forth things. I don't know if it has ever happened to you that you go to your place of worship you, to pray, you can't envy pray. It doesn't matter where it may be, it can be in church, it can be in your room, wherever you dedicated it for the Lord. That can be your place of worship. If you go there, you're just crying on the Holy Spirit was there. Those tears are not normal tears. Those tears means a lot. It is saying something in the spiritual realm. The Holy Spirit guide us. We can find that in John 16 verse 13. The Holy Spirit is our guidance here on earth. Not only does He help us to understand and apply the scripture, it teaches us how to work as Jesus worked. The Holy Spirit reveals things to us. And our reference verse for that is 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10. There are certain things about God that seem to be mysterious. It will show us why God does some of those things. We can never understand how God works. It's <laughs> just impossible for you to understand how God works. So the Holy Spirit comes in and tells us the mysterious things about the Father. And people look at your life at times and will ask you, How did you get this house? I know you as a poor man, but how did you buy this house? How did you survive from that sickness? We all knew you would die. I am a living testimony to that. I used to be very sick. Like people thought I would not even survive. Some of my family members, when they look at me, they are shocked. Like, girl, you made it. Yeah, I did. But the mysterious ways of God, I can't explain like, why some, some things happen to you. Well, at times I'll ask God questions like God. When I went to the, I went to the embassy, there were many people. Some didn't have the visa. All I heard was, sorry, the American embassy cannot give you the visa. Sorry. When my turn, I had the visa. I got that I have and others don't have. Another rule of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit fills us with boldness. We can find it to one. I'm sorry today I'm not going to read the scriptures. I'll just give the verse. So during your free time, please go through it. It's really going to help you. So the Holy Spirit makes us to be bold. There are things you can't do on your own. There are places when you go, you have to preach. 
you can ask some pastors that when they go out to preach at times to certain places can't do it on your own the role of the holy spirit in our life is that he brings us joy we can find that in first thessalonians 1 verse 6. the holy spirit brings us the joy of the lord I think as a child of god you should never allow the enemy to steal from you is your joy no matter what you are going in life do not allow the enemy to steal your joy because immediately you don't have that joy you will find yourself doing things that you will regret when satan comes in and he sends his attacks it doesn't matter from what direction or what the attacks may be please do not allow the enemy to steal your joy that joy is different from happiness sorrow may last for a night but joy comes in the morning joy is our strength that is why we need the holy spirit without joy you will live so for life you'll be angry forever you'll be angry over the little things and if you live a life that you think a man is supposed to make you happy or a woman is supposed to make you happy please take that out of your mind if you think money is going to make you happy take it out of your mind the only thing that can bring you joy is the holy spirit one of the things i always do when i'm angry when I'm sad, you know why humans, right? At times we get angry. At times the human nature in us will react. So when that happens, I like to worship. When I go in that quiet place, I'll sing worship. That is how I'll get healed. The trick of the enemy. The Bible says that we are not ignorant of his devices. When he takes your peace, when he makes you to be angry, he takes your joy. You see, you'll be thinking, oh, the best way is to divorce. Oh, the best is to kill this person oh the best way is to go there and fight the best way is just to kill myself that's what the devil wants because the joy is the bible says that do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself don't allow the joy you have to be seized to be taken away by anybody try as much as you can to maintain that joy